Hello, this is Dr. Jordan, and I'm going to talk today about DC motors that you might be using in your projects. Now, there are three types of DC motors that are most common. First, there are brushed DC motors where current flows in one direction to make it turn one way, and current flows in the other direction to make it turn the other way. Pretty simple. The disadvantage to those type of DC motors is that they don't turn off immediately, so you don't have absolute position control. They will often drift a little bit when you, when you turn them off. Stepper motors are a much, much more accurate type of motor which provides you absolute position control, but a disadvantage to that is that they require a special controller IC. It's not something that you can just connect to a transistor and, and it will go. And that's because you're providing timing for each step of the motor. And then third, there are servo motors, and I won't talk a lot about those today, but because you're using them in robotics classes and some other classes as well. But the idea with the servo motor is that you use a PWM signal, pulse width modulation, to control the position of the motor. Now you might ask, how do I connect a brush DC motor to a microcontroller? Well, first of all, DC motors are inductive loads and therefore they can't be connected directly to a microcontroller without damaging it. So inductive load, what that means is that it's a coil of wire, an inductor. And coil inductors store energy in a magnetic field and what happens is that when that magnetic field starts to break down because you've turned off the motor, the energy from that magnetic field breaks down and it needs to go somewhere. And if you don't provide it a path, then one of the paths that it may find to ground is through your microcontroller taking at least the I.O. pin and often the microcontroller down with it at, at that point in time. Now there are two successful protection mechanisms that you can use for these. The first one is called a back EMF diode, and these links are all on the blog entry on motors. And the idea with the back EMF diode is it provides a place for energy to go when the uh, motor turns off. Or now you'll see here they're showing a relay. Again, a relay is an inductive load, a solenoid is an inductive load, a DC brushed motor is an inductive load. So all of those fall into the same category from a control perspective. Now what you'd see here is that there is there would be a microcontroller connected to through the tra the resistor to the base of this transistor and so the transistor is turning on or off. Now let's say that the transistor is on. Then current will flow from the 12 volts up here down through the relay, down through the current limiting resistor, through the transistor, and to ground. And that's, that's great, it's running. And you'll note that this diode here, which is called the back EMF diode, will not have any effect because the, the diode blocks current on the wall. So current tries to come down here, it hits that wall, it can't go through the diode, so it goes through the relay instead, which is what you want, because that is, uh, that's the whole point of the relay and the, the transistor is to be able to turn it on and off. However, when the transistor turns off, that's where the magic happens. So transistor turns off, you've got a field here, the current is trying to flow, continue flowing in the same direction through the relay, and again that could be a motor or an inductor um, or a, um, a solenoid. The current is continuing to try and flow, but there's no connection to ground over here now because the transistor is turned off. So instead what happens is the current will then flow through the diode with the direction of the diode, so it'll come through here, back up here, and it will continue going in a circle again and again and again. Every time it goes through the diode, some of that energy is burned off. It will continue burning off energy through the diode until there is no more, uh, and, until there is no more magnetic field. And that keeps the voltage spike from the magnetic field breaking down from going into your microcontroller. These are an absolute requirement for any inductive load that is a basic inductor or DC brushed motor um, or, or relay. The one exception to, or actually two exceptions to this, stepper motors, you'll have something like this, but it may or may not be built into the controller chip. 
and then with servo motors they don't need them because you're actually not controlling you're controlling the servo motor through PWM but you're not uh, the power is is control is attached to the servo motor separately <clears throat> and the uh, servo motor has a control board that takes care of this sort of thing for you now the other key thing that you'll want to consider when you're controlling a motor is the idea of an H bridge and this is in mo in many cases with a motor you at least want to turn it one direction and you may want to turn it both directions and so that's where H bridges come into play now there's a great tutorial from modular circuits on H bridges and it goes through the the basic idea of it so this is the basic circuit for an H bridge you'll see there are four diodes those are back EMF diodes for each direction that the H bridge may go and then there's an A side and a B side and the way an H bridge works is you only turn on two of the four MOSFETs at a time so for instance let's say that I want my motor to go clockwise then I'll turn on Q1 and Q4 and then you'll see the current will go in the direction of the red line causing it to go from the battery all the way to ground through the motor now let's say that I want current to flow the other direction then I'll turn off Q1 and Q4 and turn on Q2 and Q3 and then current will flow the other direction through the motor and that will change the direction of it pretty straightforward the key with these is you need to make sure not to turn on everything on the same sides so for instance turning on Q1 and Q2 or Q turning on Q3 and Q4 will cause uh, smoke because it basically is a direct short between power and ground and so that will will not be good for your circuit um, these are there are a variety of variations of these there are half bridges and such it can be something that you either build yourself out of transistors and or and I actually recommend MOSFETs for for something like this because it, they're a little bit easier to use or you can buy an off-the-shelf IC um, you'll want to again as with choosing any component you will want to make sure that it can handle the current that you need for your particular motor this is a pretty common H bridge IC it handles 3 volt 3 amps and up to 55 volts it's an LMD 18200 um, that might work for many of the circuits that you're doing in this class also another comment if you only need to turn the motor on and off and you don't care about the direction then you can actually just use a transistor and this goes for solenoids too if you just need it to go one direction then just use a transistor because you never need to reverse the current an H bridge will help you reverse the current and that's really the the key value that it provides now you might also ask well how do I change the speed of a motor and there it goes down to a pulse width modulation signal and using it to control your H bridge or uh, your servo motor or your um, uh, your transistor directly if you're connecting a transistor to turn one of these devices on and off and there's a great tutorial on SparkFun and again this is linked on the blog to that talks about using pulse width modulation they're doing it in the context of stepper motors but basically what pulse width modulation is is it's about changing the duty cycle of a square wave so a 50 percent duty cycle square wave has 50 percent of the time the signal is on meaning it's a digital one so that may be 5 volts or 3.3 volts depending on your logic level and 50 percent of the time the signal is off and you can change that to say be 75 percent on 25 percent off or 25 percent on 75 percent off or anything in between and that allows you to control the speed because imagine if you're trying to power a motor and you power you want to power it at a hundred percent duty cycle so it is on this is just a straight line all the time that's the maximum voltage that you can send to the motor but if you want to cut the speed in half without re reducing the power then what you'll do is you'll go with a 50 percent duty cycle where it's only on for half of the time and because the motor has inertia in the rotor it'll continue to turn it'll just turn at a slower speed so that's the key with controlling the speed of a motor um, the last couple things I want to talk about briefly are stepper motors and um, believe it or not Wikipedia actually has a nice entry on stepper motors that has these beautiful uh, animations that talk about the idea so stepper motors have multiple coils 
and the way that you control them is by turning the coils on in sequence and every time you turn a coil on it will advance the rotor just a little bit and they don't freely spin like if you they they typically will have so let's say five or more wires and they don't freely spin so if you just power up the wires nothing will typically happen because it's all about the sequence of wires that matters so if you take a look there's some timing diagrams down here this is an example timing diagram for a stepper motor where you'll see that there's it uh, it turns on the first coil there are four coils in the motor it turns on the first coil for a little bit then it turns on the second coil then it turns on the third coil then it turns on the fourth coil in sequence and that's how it gets it to advance each step these are relatively involved to control by hand uh, usually in this day and age because there are so many great stepper motor control chips out there you'll just buy the control chip off the shelf um, in the in particular you need to make sure that the specifications of the control chip match up with the specifications of the stepper motor in particular the voltage and the current so similar when you're specking out anything to control a motor you want to make sure that your whatever you're controlling it with can handle the voltage and the current of the actual device. Uh, this is one of many different common stepper motor controller ICs. This is a DRV8825 from Texas Instruments. Um, something key to, to note here is too, it shows you a simplified schematic of how to actually connect it up and wh what all the control pins are and so that is is something useful with these you'll want to make sure that you read the data sheet pretty thoroughly even if you don't understand all of it right up front to make sure that you you have an understanding of how to connect it and whether there are any external components necessary in order to make it work and that's all stuff that'll talk about in the data sheet I hope this helps give you an overview of motors, and I'm happy to answer any questions. If you have any, uh, just email out to esdpoly at asu.edu. Have a great day.